Welcome back to the channel. Apple II compatible wire by wire build. The address pass part one. Presented by me, Dr. Matt Regan. And don't forget, there is a part two coming. And a little bit of a warning for those new to computer architecture, this will probably be the trickiest part of the build. The aim of this playlist is to show the build for this board. It's an Apple II compatible and it uses a 65C02 microprocessor. The idea being to show how the microprocessor works in the context of a system. I've used an Arduino Mega connected to a PC for display, keyboard and floppies. And this really is prerequisite knowledge before moving on to the Turing 6502. Here is our ultimate goal, the Turing 6502. This is an 8-bit Turing machine and it runs a 6502 emulator. It has an Arduino Mega interface like the current build and it runs Apple II software. So I want to go back to the ducks in pigeonholes, and remember that we start numbering the pigeonholes from zero. Remember that I'm using this as a metaphor for how computer memory works. Please watch how the CPU interacts with memory. And yes, I'm going to keep playing this at the start of each video until it's so obvious to you, you'll want to fast forward past it. Note the set of blue wires between the CPU and memory. That's what we're building in this pair of videos. So let's talk about the address bus. We actually use a scheme very similar to the data bus with multiple wires and two voltage levels per wire. This way we can encode all of the addresses of the pigeonholes with just six wires. And each pigeonhole has a unique combination of voltages on the wires. How does this compare to the 6502? Well, the 6502 uses 16 wires, labelled A0 through A15, and the entire set of wires is called the address bus. Each wire is independent and carries either 0 or 5 volts, and usually only the 6502 alone can set the voltage on these wires. The 16 wires means there are 65,536 addresses or pigeonholes, and the memory looks at these wires to determine which address or pigeonhole is to be used right now. Like the data bus, Wiring the address bus to the memory is pretty straightforward. A0 connects to A0, A1 connects to A1 and so forth, all the way up to A15, which connects to A15. Surprise, surprise. So we know that the Apple II uses both read-only memory and random access memory, and I'm going to need both of those in this build. For this part of the build, the address bus connects the CPU to the SRAM and the EEPROM. There's also a direct path to the Arduino Mega, but like the data bus, this is only to be used for testing. I'm placing in sockets for two chips in the build now. One is the 74HC04, which is called a hex inverter, and the other is the 74HC30. Now I'll come back to the 74HC30 later in the build, but what's a hex inverter? In fact, what's an inverter? And so an inverter is a logic gate that's represented by a small equilateral triangle, little circle at one end. Usually it's drawn like this. It has one single input and one single output, and really it's the smallest usable gate possible. And its operation is quite simple. If the input voltage is zero, the chip will set the output voltage to be five volts. And if the input voltage is five volts, the chip will set the output voltage to be zero volts. And we can also represent it in binary. Now I need the address lines from A8 to A13 to be connected to the inverter. I'll make it clear later in the series why I'm doing this, but let's return to the build for a little while. This part of the build will take us to the end of this video, so something you might like to play it a bit faster than normal.
I'll wind this video up here. Next video is part two of the address bus build. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and press the notification bell.